Alright, so that last example was particularly easy because we just had two distinct factors on the bottom. Here's an example that's a little harder. So this is a little harder because we have one of the factors squared in the bottom. Um, it's not that bad though. I'll so instead of just guessing that maybe we'd have a number divided by this factor plus a number divided by this factor, we have to throw in something else. So we're going to guess that this has the form a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x plus 2 squared. And this is always the way it'll be. If you have something to a power higher than 1 here, you have to take f terms like this, where it's to the first power and to the second power, and if this had been to the fifth power, we'd have to take a term with this to the third, fourth, and fifth. So now that we write it this way, we have to see if we can actually solve this, just like before. So the way we do that, we, we get a common denominator again. So this term I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2 squared. This term I'm going to multiply by x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then the last term I just multiply by x plus 3, x minus 3, sorry. So let's combine all these terms. The x squared term, I'll have a in front of x squared here, b in front of x squared here, and there's no x squared there. So I have a plus b times x squared. Here I'll have 4x times a. Here I'll have negative x times b. So I'll have 4a minus b. This is something you can check. I'm just sort of doing it in my head. And I have c times x there. So that's the x term. And the constant term I'll have 4a negative 6b negative 3c. All still divided by this. And just as in the previous problem, in order for this to be true, the numerator here has to equal the numerator there. And the only way that can happen is if a plus b is 1, because that's the coefficient of x squared. And we need 4a minus b plus c to be 0, because there's no x term here. And there's no constant term, so we need 4a minus 6b minus 3c to be 0. So now this is a system of three equations and three unknowns. So we can still just solve this using sort of substitution. The first equation tells me a equals 1 minus b. I can plug that into for a in the other two equations. So I get 4, 1 minus b, minus b plus c equals 0. 4, 1 minus b, minus 6b, minus 3c, equals 0. So simplifying this one, we get negative 5b plus c equals negative 4. With this one, we get negative 10b, minus 3c, equals negative 4. 
And just because it's convenient, I'll solve for C in this one and plug that into the second one. So I get C is negative 4 plus 5B. So negative 10B minus 3C is just this. And that equals negative 4. So let's see, I get negative 10 minus 15b, so minus 25b. Here I'll have plus 12. And I'll subtract the 12 to the other side. And that leaves me with negative 25b equals negative 16. So finally, b is just 16 over 25. Going here, c equals negative 4 plus 5 times 16 over 25, which is 16 over 5 minus 4. So I get minus 20 plus 16 over 25, which is negative 4 over 25. And if you'll recall, a was 1 minus b, so a is 1 minus 16 over 25, which is 9 over 25. Oops, this should have been 5, sorry about that. So I have a is 9 over 25, b is 16 over 25, and c is negative 4 over 5. So the original expression is 9 over 25 divided by x minus 3 plus 16 over 25 times 1 over x plus 2 minus 4 fifths 1 over x plus 2 squared. And this is nice, although it's tedious, because now we can integrate the original thing. The integral of this will be 9 over 25 times natural log x minus 3 plus 16 over 25 natural log x plus 2 minus 4 fifths, um, well, this is x plus 2 to the negative 2, I add 1 to the power and divide by that, so I'll get a plus 1 over x plus 2.